Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my first impressions review of Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out Season 2. Um, so yeah, we finally get to Season 2. It has been something I have been waiting for for quite a long time. Um, but just a little recap. If you uh, didn't see my uh, Season 1 first impressions video, or just didn't know my thoughts on on this series at the start. So Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out um, is a series that came out a couple years back, and I wasn't interested at first. It was one of those shows that I just didn't really have an interest in. I had seen the character designs, and it's like, oh, Uzaki's really fucking cute, but I, I just never really thought, like, I should check this out. But I finally decided to give in and do so, and I checked out the first episode, and I loved it, actually. I thought it was really funny. It was really cute. I, I thought it was wonderful. And so I continued watching. I did a first impressions video on the first episode and everything, and I continued watching. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a very cute series. Like, I mean, one of the big hang-ups going into it that I had was like, oh, is it just going to be ridiculously fan y to the point of, you know, unenjoyability? And the answer is actually very much no. Like, there is definitely fan service, like, obviously. I mean, Uzaki has massive-ass tits. <laughs> So there's going to be fan service, and there, there's quite a bit of it throughout the season. Um, but it's really not that bad. Like, you would think it would be a lot worse, but it's really not. Like, the fan service is there, and, and like, it's pretty obvious, pretty blatant about it. But it's very much overshadowed by the comedy the ridiculously fun situations that the characters find themselves in and the growing relationship between uh shinichi let shinichi sakurai and hana uzuki um and it's it's honestly really cute and kind of wholesome a lot of the time like, it surprises you with that. Um, and, and the relationship between them is very natural feeling. It, it doesn't come across as forced. It doesn't come across as unbelievable at all. It's very natural. And it makes you actually root for them to get together. Um, so, so I really, really enjoyed it. And there were so many great moments in, in the first season... Uzaki had so many great outfits, um, a lot of wonderful side characters such as Ami, who uh, works at the same cafe that they do and is really invested in getting them um, together. <laughs> um, and, and so I was really excited when season two was announced. I, I hoped it would have been, and it finally did. And so when season two started airing, I'm wondering, like, okay, I'm waiting for the dub for this because... One of the biggest appeals for season one for me was the dub voices. Monica Rial is definitely one of my favorite uh, dub VAs. Her, her performance as Hana Uzuki is flawless. In my eyes, she is the quintessential voice of this character. I've heard the Japanese, and it's not bad. It's just I, I so vastly perf prefer the english voices and she's one of the main reasons um but you have other great voices in there as well besides just her um and, and i'm really excited to see where they take it now that the dub has started airing because i was waiting and, and there's three episodes of the sub out but only one of the dub out so far as of when i'm recording and uploading this on on that day um and so I was waiting for this for a couple of weeks, and it's like, it's finally here. And it's like, I didn't even know it had come out. 
I was literally looking on Twitter. I, I, because I, Twitter is how I gain a lot of my news, especially for dub premieres. And I, I was looking on Twitter and I, I, I looked up like Uzaki dub in the search bar. Cause usually I'll find if, if something was announced, I'd be able to find it that way. It's like, oh, here's the announcement. And I saw, it's like, it, it came out this past weekend. And it's like, wait, how did I not hear about this? How did I not hear about this before? It's like, it's, it's our, the first episode's already out. I never heard an announcement for this at all. And it's like, I, I, I mean, hey, I'm not going to complain. That means I can get to it. <laughs> and so I watched the first episode and that's what these first impressions are for. Um, it feels like it, it never stopped. It feels like a perfect continuation from the first season um, the characters are still, like, wonderful wonderful and likable and exceptionally cute. Um, and, yeah, the humor is still great. There's a lot of really fun stuff in this episode. Um, as you can tell by the thumbnail, there is bowling in this episode, for example. Uzaki and Sakurai challenge each other to bowling games and try to one-up each other the entire time. Uzaki's trolling him during the during the game, and he's, like, using his rage to propel his uh, abilities and get strikes and stuff. It, it's ridiculous. And they're there with um, Sakurai's other friend. I can't remember his name at the moment. The blonde guy, though. He was in season one. Um, and he's just, like, he's just watching them the entire time. He's like, oh, come on. You two are totally a thing. <laughs> And it's like, he he's like that throughout the entire episode. He's just watching them. It's like, they are so in denial. And and yeah, because as, you, as we saw in the first season, they legitimately fell in love with each other. It's unquestionable that they love each other. They just haven't admitted it and made anything official yet. But the fact that they are, like, in love with each other is so blatantly obvious. <laughs> Everyone can see it except them. Um, which comes back in at the end of the episode, uh, very notably. Um, but I'll get to that. So outside of just bowling, they also go to work. And there, Ami, the girl I mentioned before, tries to get them to dress up. This is because in the previous season, they went to a karaoke bar and uh, they did some dress-up stuff then, her and Uzaki. So now she's trying to get Uzaki and uh, Sakurai to dress up in very sexy clothing like Uza some of the clothing she chose for uzaki is like a swimsuit a bunny girl outfit uh uh different forms of like maids and whatnot and it's like this is this is wonderful she's just horny for them <laughs> like she's just blatantly horny as fuck for them she just wants to see them in sexy outfits because they're both sexy and it's like, th this girl is just horny. But yeah, like her, her father who runs the cafe is away for uh, the day. And so she decides to utilize the opportunity, basically. Um, she gets Uzaki to dress up in a few of the outfits, but Uzaki's not really going for it. She's like, how am I supposed to work in these? <laughs> and Sakurai doesn't even do anything. He He's like... He comes out of the changing room and he's like, "Wait, are you, are you serious?" It's like, "There's only some like le leather pant leather shorts in this," and it's like, she imagines what it would look like on him, so we get to kind of see, but he doesn't actually put it on in reality. Um, and it's it's literally just leather shorts with a zipper, a very noticeable zipper right in the front, and it's like, oh. She is super fucking horny. <laughs> um, and I mean, I can't necessarily blame her. Like, they're both very attractive characters. Um, I I've always found Uzaki exceptionally pretty. Like, not even just hot, but pretty as well. Like, I, I think she gen like her eyes especially are very are very pretty. They're very beautiful. And Sakurai has kind of this just classic hot guy look to him as well. 
Um, and they're both they're both adults, so there's nothing wrong with finding them attractive. It's just it's just wild how much she is horny for them both. It seems, <laughs> which obviously nothing wrong with that either. Like her being horny for both of them. Um, but Jesus, those outfits were very horny. <laughs> And again, I mean, I don't mind that because, uh, like, again, I I find them attractive too. So it's like, yeah, seeing Uzaki in a bunny girl outfit and everything, seeing her in maid outfits and stuff. It's like, yeah, that's that's very hot. I, I will not argue. That is very hot. <laughs> seeing Sakurai in those shorts, it's like, Jesus, like, I'm blushing and, like, I need to go to horny jail. <laughs> But, like, that she kind of basically does. Because <laughs> her father does come back and catches her doing this. And he's against this for a lot of reasons. And so to punish her, he makes her dress in the bunny girl outfit while, uh, you know, performing her job. Uh, serving the customers of the cafe and everything. And she's very embarrassed by it. It's like, oh, you want to see them dress up because you're horny for them. But if you're in the outfit... Uh, that's not okay with you. It's like, oh, we got a little bit of a double standard there, I guess. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, but she's also very hot too. <laughs> so it's like, I, I'm still okay with seeing her in this outfit too. <laughs> um, it, it, it was definitely the horny portion of the episode. And then, and then kind of the third portion of the episode focuses on the fact that Uzaki's been keeping Sakurai up at night sleep uh, sleeplessly because she wants to continue to play games and he wants to go to sleep and everything, but she wants to like always do always one more level, you know? You know that kind of thing? Always one more level. Um, but Sakurai falls asleep and so the next day in school in their college um he's trying to get some extra rest during the day and uzaki finds him sleeping on a bench and decides to lay down beside him uh while they wait for their next class and just basically uh snooze with him they both end up falling asleep uh well he was already asleep but she ends up falling asleep by him and like they end up cuddling while they're asleep and, and it's like the one friend, the blonde guy again, comes by. It's like, are you are you serious? Like, you are really this much into now? I mean, look at you two. <laughs> and it's like, God, they, they are so cute. And it's like, please, just make it official already. We know they like each other. We, and, and you're doing shit like this. And it's like, I know that's the nature of a show like this. Uh, to do the entire will they, won't they. Even though it's so fucking obvious they will be together. <laughs> It's just, yeah, like, come on. Like, they look so fucking cute and everything uh, together there. Like, and, and they, again, they genuinely like each other. It, it's not even a question. Like, yeah, they play it off as they're just, like, really good friends and everything. And Uzaki sometimes makes fun of him while playing it off uh, to, like, say... Like, oh, no, 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 we're just, uh, I, I, felt, I felt bad for him, so. <laughs> but we've seen it time and time again, and it's even shown in this episode, them, the way they look at each other, the way they talk about each other. It's like, it's so obvious that they have a thing for each other. And I, I think that they just don't want to admit it. I think Sakurai doesn't want to admit it because Uzaki, to him, is sometimes a little annoying and sometimes a troll but he 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 acknowledges they're good friends he acknowledges that but he just doesn't want to admit that he has feelings for her as well and she doesn't want to admit it because she's shy as all fuck <laughs> like she plays it off because she's also an extrovert um and these two things can coexist because i'm that way i'm an extrovert but i'm also shy but in a different manner than her See, she's an extrovert in the fact that she's very, like, excitable. She has a very, like, wild personality and is constantly talking to and making fun of uh, Sakurai and hanging out with others and stuff. 
Um, but she, but when it comes to actually admitting, like her real feelings about things, she really gets notably nervous, and she starts like stuttering and like breaking down and getting really scared. Uh, it, it seems so. I I feel like it's very clear that she's putting on almost a persona like this this excessively exuberant persona i think she is an extrovert but the the excessively wild personality that she is shown to have the constant making fun of sakurai and everything and just everything else with her personality it's it's an act she's putting it on to well to have fun but also because it gets it allows her to hide her true feelings that she's you know unsure of and scared of and embarrassed by it's it's very clear that whenever like the idea of her liking sakurai comes up whether said by someone else or even when she just thinks about it she like clams up really notably and it's super fucking cute to see that side of her as well. And again, I kind of explain I'm kind of the same way. I'm very extrovert. I love spending time with people. I love going to places with people. I, I I love going to like parties and hanging out. But at the same time, I'm really shy and quiet. With me, I don't ha I don't have that outward personality that uh allows me to like act all wild and outgoing. Um, I, I'm just the shy aspect. It's like I, I get really like closed in on myself and everything when I uh, interact with people. Even if I love doing so, even if I love being around people, I still get very nervous and timid around them. So it's, it's a different kind of shyness compared to the extroversion than with Uzaki, but I still kind of get the idea and the feeling there. Um, but yeah, so the episode just kind of kicks things off and everything as, as the new school year begins. It's just a way to reintroduce things to show that their relationship is still going strong. And the comedy's on point, the, the goofiness is on point, the sexiness is on point. It's all on point. It's all great, as always. So if you've seen the first episode of season two of Uzaki Chan Wants to Hang Out, please let me know down in the comments below what did you think of it. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.